Hi. I know I need to shave. Shut up. Um, before I start this video, I just have to share some positive news for once. Because there have been two dogs in all of history that have liked me. First one would be my grandpa's dog, who loved everyone. And the second one was that dog that appeared in the NASCAR Weekly podcast for Chicagoland 2018. Um, and I only saw that dog for a grand total of one weekend. So I bet if I met this dog a second time, it would probably not go over desperately great. But we can add a third to the list. Because my assistant manager has this adorable, tiny little thing. And I tell you what. It, it, it digs its fucking claws directly into my, you know, pants. Surprised I haven't gotten a hole in my pants. But, like, I sat down and that little fucker just jumped right into my lap and sat there. And just accepted sitting there for a good 20 minutes. And I'm just like, what? This dog likes me? That's not legal. That's not supposed to happen. So I just thought I'd share some positive news with everyone for once. Speaking of positive news, um, there's not a whole lot <laughs> to discuss when it comes to this video. Hey, you have heard of PolitiFact, but have you heard of Polita Mac? I thought of that while driving back. <laughs> 2024. What's going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> Everyone that I watch is saying, you know, like, I see everyone saying it right now. It's, it's going to be a red wave. Uh, everyone that I watch is like, it's going to be a historic landslide. And then, like, the people on the left that I follow are like, guys, we're fucked. We're totally fucked. And I'm just sitting back here like, are you sure? <laughs> because after 2020, I don't doubt anything anymore. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It, 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 we could still, we could still see something bad happen in November. November's coming. November is coming. It is six and a half months until the midterm election for 2022, which is important. Very important. What else is important? Primary season. I don't know when the North Dakota primaries are. And I can't find any information whatsoever on the North Dakota candidates. Not like it matters, per se. If I was like in Virginia or something, it would maybe matter. But here, no. It actually doesn't matter. I'm probably going to get the same boring, middle-aged, 50-year-old guy that grew up on a farm and likes, and likes to shoot stuff. I don't know. I highly doubt we're going to get any kind of specialized picks this year. No, I'm not hoping. I'm not expecting anything anyway. There's a guy that fucking likes racing. There's a guy from here in this town that is like a, a huge supporter of our racetrack who's running for office. I don't even know what his policies are. I'm guessing most of them are probably bad, but I'm still voting for him. <laughs> Anyone who supports racing gets my vote, okay? Just saying. Just saying. I am a single issue voter. And my single issue is, oh my god, the economy is so fucked. They took out so much money, so much money in federal taxes, not even just federal taxes, state taxes. They took off over a hundred dollars from my last paycheck for state taxes. They took off $250 for federal taxes on my last paycheck. What the fuck are you spending it on? Joe, what are you spending it on? Oh yeah. Fucking sending nukes to Ukraine. Thanks. That's what I want my tax money to go to. To fighting a war that we shouldn't even be involved in and doesn't concern us in any capacity. I'm so glad that my f fucking income is directly supporting this. Not by choice. That's cool. So, what's going to happen in 2024? Well, I don't know, dude. Because it's, it's a good time to start thinking about this now. Because when the um, election rolls around and like the exact opposite happens... We can, uh, we can look back and cry because I'm going to make some predictions that I'm probably going to regret in a second. <laughs> so, we all know Trump's running. 
and God, dude, there there was no way he should have lost in 2020. And if I actually gave my true opinion on the 2020 election, my channel would no longer exist as of the upload of this video. So we're not even going to go there. But he, by all metrics, there is no way that he should have lost in 2020. And yet, here we are. Why do you think I'm so pessimistic about the uh, chances for 2024? Because... By all metrics, more metrics than last time, even. It should be like a 49-state landslide, all right? But it probably won't be. I mean, I, I guarantee you it won't be, because that kind, of, that kind of era of politics has ended. Everything is very divisive. It is very urban versus rural, and it's only getting worse. City issues completely, cities completely disregard rural issues, and that's always been a thing. That's been a thing for more than just a couple of years. But rural communities are starting to say, fuck you to the cities, which, I mean, I have. I've done the same, but that's that's equally as bad. That is bad. Going in the complete opposite direction of progress on um, bipartisanship is bad. Okay, because we all know that the cities are trying to fuck the small towns and the rural communities. We've known that for all time. We do not need to retaliate. Okay, we do not need to elect um, Jim Bob Thornton, who lives in Cactus Valley, Arizona, and he spends his entire time on his uh, 50 acre pig farm. And he literally, he literally doesn't even have a house. He just, he just sleeps with the pigs. They just hang out, you know. We can't elect him and be like, and he can't go into like a board meeting like, all right, y'all, we need to do something about the cities taking all our water. It's like we should turn, we should turn off all the reservoirs to the city, and then the entire boardroom cheers, and then Arizona state economy collapses because Phoenix dies. You see, you see what I'm trying to say is that you cannot have it one way. You cannot have it one way. That is not how societies function. That is not how America got where we are today. The Senate being two people from each state and the House being um, proportional to population is a good thing. It's a good thing. This was done on purpose and it was a good thing. <laughs> okay? I haven't even talked about the purpose of this video. This pur The purpose of this video was for me to predict who the fucking people who were going to be on the ticket were. And by all metrics right now, by every estimation, everyone's saying it at this point. We all know it. Trump will be the Republican candidate. Okay? The only real question at this time, who will be his VP? Because we all know it's not going to be Mike Pence. Let's go. Raise the roof on that one. Glad to get that uh, electroshock gay conversion therapy pile of rat ass shit out of the vice president sip. Vice president C. I would love to see him try and go up against Trump as candidate for president. Oh, oh baby, that would be pure comedy. I hope it happens. But um, yeah. Um, who would be his VP? Because there is there any real candidate that jumps out at us at this time? I can't think of any. I really can't think of any. The only one I can think of would be Ron DeSantis, who everyone says that, you know, a Trump DeSantis ticket wouldn't be the greatest thing in the world. I mean, I think it would be pretty good. I would a hundred I would vote for that a hundred times out of a hundred. <laughs> and all my dead relatives would too. <laughs> but um it's like, yeah, but the thing is, it's just like, is that what we need at this time? Is Ron DeSantis keeping, you know, the Florida, the, the state of Florida, like, moving, like, existing as a whole? Is that worth sacrificing just for him to be a vice president? Now, I'm, what I'm really interested in is in my main girl. What's Tulsi going to do? Because Tulsi is a real wild card. Okay? Her Twitter feed has been nonstop gold. 100% correct takes. Ever since, like, she threw her hat into the ring for 2020. She has had a correct take every single time that you open up, you get a tweet notification for Tulsi, you know you're going to see some fire shit, is what I'm trying to say. 
And what I was thinking is, okay, Trump Gabbard 2024, the bipartisan ticket that the world needs. Because she is a Democrat. You see her when she goes on Fox, she still has a D next to her name. Could we see her not even flip Republican, but just like, that she would probably have to do that to get the vice presidency, which is why I was thinking, what if Trump grabs Tulsi to be Secretary of State? Because I think that's the perfect role for Tulsi, just to get her feet wet into an administration and potentially move into a P or VP slot for 2028. Because Tulsi is still very young and very much not suicidal, <laughs> as we have established. And every single take of hers is 100% perfect from start to finish. Just go through her Twitter and you will see nothing but good takes. <laughs> no misses. She don't miss. All right? And that's why I think that, and like, and like everything that she posts is pretty liberal, is like completely like liberal in nature. But if, if you read it in today's context, it looks far right, which is stupid, but that's just where we are in life. And that's why I believe that she could be the bipartisan pick to unite the nation, you know? You're going to see your disaffected liberals are going to look at that and see, you know, this is not going to be first term Trump because I would happily vote for Trump tomorrow. However, he was still a bit of a failure. <laughs> OK, the economy was was perfect in 2019. I bought so many things in 2019 without fear of anything, anything going wrong. I was so I bought my laptop in 2019 I was thinking of getting that that um, that uh, Taurus in Wishik in 2019, but just student loans were just too much to justify taking out yet another loan. But um, and um, yeah. But you see, Trump comes with this fair share of problems because he brought in a bunch of neoconservative losers who just bloated you know many things he made some poor decisions militarily i still don't think that the strikes in syria and the strikes against solomari or whatever his name is the iranian dude i still am opposed to those but he did broker the peace deal with the taliban he went to north korea he shook hands with um with uh, Kim, with all Kim, dear leader, we love Kim. Kim's Kim's cool, okay? You know, North Korea is an absolute authoritarian hellhole, but you gotta appreciate Kim, all right? Man's cute, you have to admit, you have to admit. He's got that, he's got that, you know, he's got that round, you know, face that you just want to squeeze his cheek, you know? I mean, that's just me. That's just me, though. But he fucking did that, and <laughs> but um and but you see he didn't he did bad things too. He didn't pardon Assange. He didn't pardon Snowden. Now Assange is gonna fucking get extradited to the U.S. and die in a fucking Guantanamo Bay prison cell probably, because that's freedom of fucking speech right there. That's that's journalistic ethics right there. That's yeah. We're just uh mm hmm hmm um. What else did Trump do that wasn't good? Um, he was fucking around with that, uh, uh, with, with repealing Obamacare or whatever, which, you know, I'm not entirely opposed to, but, you know, it was still poor optics and the plan that he had as a replace. There wasn't even a plan to replace it. He said he kept seeing repeal and replace, repeal and replace, repeal and replace. And he had, like, nothing to replace it with. And it was like, yeah, no. I would prefer to vote for Ron, San Ron this time around. DeSantis 2024 would be 100% okay with me. But the thing is, is that optically, Trump has everything to lose at this point. Okay? That, like, it could not... I mean, he has everything to gain at this point. Sorry. Um, 
because the economy is such a catastrophic disaster right now. Like, I don't know if I've been saying it on these thinking chair videos, but like, holy shit, dude, we're so fucked. Oh, we are categorically in every facet of the word. We are fucked when it comes to the economy. November can't come fast enough, dude. Oh, oh man, we got to make it another five and a half months. <laughs> That's a long time. And the economy is so hopelessly fucked right now. Oh, it's bad. We are in bad shape. Oh, it's, if it wasn't so dire, if the fact that, like, our, the United States dollar could, like, the value could be cut in half tomorrow, that's a thing that could realistically happen. If it wasn't for that, it would be fucking hilarious, dude. Oh, my goodness. I hope we can look back and laugh at this because, Jesus, <laughs> oh, man, we are not in good shape. So then you got the question of, okay, so the Democrats are completely and hopelessly fucked unless something stupid happens, which I'm not counting out. So when it comes to 2024, who's going to be the Dem candidate? And I was thinking about this at work, dude. I was just thinking about this. I was going to make this video and I was thinking about it and I'm like, okay, so there's no way that if Joe Biden runs for re-election, I don't even think he wins the primary. I don't even think he wins a state. I don't think he even wins a state if he tries to run again. So who does that leave? All right, well, we got Cop Mala Harris, uh, police VP. <laughs> the most terrifying, the, like just Hillary, Hillary Clinton in brown face, basically. And, you know, got less, con got less um, electors than Tulsi did. Tulsi got two. Cop Mala got... <clears throat> Fucking loser. Anyway. Um, no one has ever liked Kamala. Even as the... As Biden's approval just plummets. And like Kamala's hiding in a closet somewhere. You know, no one talks about Kamala. On, on news. On Twitter. No one even knows what she's doing. And yet her approval rating continues to go down. It's wild. She's not even in the public eye and her approval continues to go down because no one's ever liked Kamala. No one has ever liked Kamala. Tulsi got more electors than Kamala. No one likes Kamala. Oh my God. I, for good reason. Kamala's garbage. A terrible person. Hired and basically kept prisoners as slave labor in California and laughed about it. I mean, that alone... I never see Kamala on the news. I never see Kamala on Twitter. I never see Kamala in Twitter clips. I never see Kamala when I'm watching uh, right-wing podcasts. They never even talk about her because she doesn't do anything. And sure, approval level is still in this fucking shitter. It's still lower than Biden's. There's no way Kamala's going to be the fucking uh, Democrat thing. So that's your president and vice president. That's your incumbent out for um the um for the seat in uh 2024 they'd have to be fucking stupid to even attempt to get them on the ticket so who does that leave okay we got bernie who i will still vote for i would still vote for bernie <laughs> after everything that's happened i would still vote for bernie because the establishment hates him and if he's doing something to make the establishment pissed off I will support him. That's why I support Thomas Massey. That's why I support Marjorie Taylor Greene. Because everyone in the, in the mainstream neo-lib, neo-con um, circles in Washington hate them. They hate them. Which is why I will still support Bernie. Okay? They, they, the establishment still hates Bernie. They fucked him over every single time. And he still capitulates. He still capitulates because he's spineless. But I'd still vote for him over like Ted fucking Cruz or something. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't know, dude. Uh, uh, what if 2016 Bernie had won? 
I still think about this. What if he hadn't gotten cheated out of the primaries deliberately by the DNC? What if that hadn't happened? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Shit would be looking a lot different. That's for sure. So who? I, they, they're going to fuck over Bernie. So he's not going to... He's not gonna, I, I mean, I, I say all this and he's not going to win the ticket. There's no chance. They'll, they'll fuck him over like they always do. So no Bernie. It's not going to be Bernie. <laughs> Who's left? Pete Buttigieg. Who? <laughs> he is white. And he's a white male. Can't be. I mean, Joe Biden won. Won. And he's a white male, so I mean, you never fucking know, dude. Is Hillary gonna run again? Sweet Jesus, why is Hillary still around? <laughs> Go away! <laughs> Just retire with whatever dignity you have left. Just stop. Stop. For your own sake, stop. <laughs> If it was Hillary versus Trump again, it might actually be a 49-state landslide. <laughs> For your own sake, Hillary, stop. I want Trump to win. And if Trump went against Hillary, he'd win automatically. <laughs> but, it, but for your own sake, Hillary, just give it up. <laughs> Do you want to know my honest opinion? I think 2024... It's going to be Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama is the single, solitary person on the Dem ticket that could win in 2024. I believe that a Michelle Obama ticket could win. Who would be vice president? That's a very good question. I think it would have to be just some generic random dude. Not fucking Tim Kaine. Don't do Tim Kaine again. I was thinking... I think Mayor Pete, Beto O'Rourke, I don't know, dude. But Michelle Obama as on the ticket. Now, I don't know how Michelle would do in the debates. I don't know how she'd do in speeches, in rallies. But optically, Michelle Obama is the one person that can beat the Republicans in 2024. And I know that there's some people in the audience that are going to be laughing at me when I suggest that the Republicans could lose in 2024. They can. They can absolutely snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. It can happen. Do not underestimate the machine. Okay? However, that being said, Michelle Obama, at this point in time, is the one person that can beat the Republicans. And I see it. I think it's very, very 98% chance that it's Michelle Obama on the ticket. Now, as for the Republicans, 98% certain it's going to be Trump. The only real question at this point... Who will be the vice president picks? I don't know. I don't know. That's a very good question. Gavin Newsom? I don't know. Gavin Newsom? Obama Newsom? It's possible. But I, I, I'm still trying to think on the Republican side. Who would Trump pick as a running mate? There's no one that there's no one on either side that really screams out right now, and that's okay because it's 2022. We still got two whole years and change before this election even takes place. What, what honestly matters right now is just the midterm elections this year. Um, that's really the only thing that matters. At this moment in time. Because while I think that Michelle Obama and Trump are the locks for the presidency on the ticket for 2024, we still have a lot of time between now and then. 
There is a lot of time between now and then. So, what's going to happen in the midterms? Well, there's been a lot of defortification in a lot of key swing states. I believe Pennsylvania has completely undone their voter registration laws and like mail-in voting laws. So Pennsylvania should be a pretty safe red state. Um, I haven't heard a lot of updates on Michigan. I haven't heard a lot of updates in Arizona. But like those key swing states. Florida, I believe there's no chance that it'll be a swing state. I think it's going to be close in Florida because um, DeSantis barely won. Um, his election and I don't think that was I I don't think that I think that was before 2020 but still it was close and right now is an incredibly divisive moment in time in politics because the um, the polls may say that it's definitely in favor of the Republicans right now one that can change on a dime and two polls have meant jack shit ever since 2016 they have been completely wrong every time. So why do people even look at the polls? <laughs> they mean basically nothing. So, yeah. I think that the Republicans are going to safely win the, the midterms. I think that they're going to take the House. They're going to take the Senate, you know. They're going to have majorities in both branches. However, what that number is, is the real question that we're at. Could we see a tie? I think the Senate is very close right now, but as far as the House is concerned, could we see a tie-ish there? I think the Senate is going to be very safe red. I believe that the Republicans are going to take the Senate effortlessly. When it comes to the House, that's that's a bit of a bigger question. As for the numbers, we could probably we're probably it, it we're still pretty far out. But like, if nothing changes and the way the economy is going, it's gonna get worse before it gets any better. <laughs> so I'm gonna say, eh, on the whole, if things change. But I mean, fucking anything is possible. I don't think any predictions at this point even matter. I've made it. I've made this 28 minute long video and probably nothing that I've said thus far even matters. But still, I can pretty confidently say that I believe we'll see 60-40 in the Senate. And we'll probably see the Republicans take a slim, maybe 15 10 to 15 seat lead in the House this November. And I'm guessing we'll have a few runoff elections that will be politicized to no end. And YouTube will have the ticker beneath the video that says, Oh, the voters are still being counted. And no decision has been made at this time. We're going to see that shit again. And we'll probably see the do 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 boop do 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 do. We'll probably see that again at some point. Um, there will be some hotly contested seats. There's going to be a lot of close runs. I'm thinking, especially in the South, Texas to Georgia, that whole area down there, except for Mississippi. Mississippi is safe red. <laughs> oh, it's safe red. But as for uh, Alabama, even. But Georgia and Texas for sure, because Texas is Texas is getting a lot of the influx of California refugees. Um, Florida has two. Florida's got a significant amount of California refugees, but Texas has been like the biggest gainer. So I think Texas might be a Texas was safe red in 2020. It could be kind of tilting towards blue maybe not heavily but at least like the scale is starting to turn in that direction so you could see some pretty close runs in texas 
I don't know what race Beto's in, but he's going to lose that in a landslide. But every other race, every other race in Texas. You know, yeah. This video's already gone on for way too long. Um, so my prediction is 60-40 Senate in favor of the Republicans and 10 to 15 seats in the House. Obviously, this can all change. Five and a half months is a long time, but crazier things have happened. Anyway, this has been Mac, the most important character on the channel. And this has been me bloviating for a half an hour. I'm going to go to bed because you could probably tell I'm very tired. Go, Algar. Bye.